Hill, my first guest tonight, has his own place in its story. Along with his brother, he formed a band, Oasis, which changed the musical landscape of the 90s. Their songs became the anthems of a generation. They also lived a lifestyle which embraced the extremes of drugs, sex and rock and roll. They survived long enough to celebrate album sales of 50 million and to make a best of album called Stop the Clocks. Ladies and gentlemen, Noel Gallagher. <laughs> You're at the best of stage at your career now. That's a landmark, isn't it? Yeah, before I'm 40 as well. It's not bad going, now, is it? That's all right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah and you also had news today that you've got an uh, outstanding achievement award at next year's Brits. Greatest living human being of all time. That's right, Brits. that's the next <laughs> award. Then the yeah. knighthood. Yeah, oh, no, I wouldn't go for it. Oh, I don't no, know about no, that. No, no, then no, the no. story would be absolutely complete, wouldn't no, it? No, I don't think so. Eh? I don't think so, no. But I think, we get, I think we're getting a gong at the Brits for the, you know... Lifetime achievement thing. Yeah. That's right. Well, yeah, that's, that's should be good, good night. Yeah. 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 And when, we'll talk about you know how you got there because it's a fascinating story. But but what about this this album? I mean, it's it's called Stop the Clocks. Does that yeah. mean that you're finished now with the Oasis? Or no, what? no. It's it's a kind of um, we, we we only got back off our tour in March uh, March of this year, which is only about six months ago, and we were not we weren't going to re-sign with our record label Sony, so they own all the rights to all the music anyway. So we got wind that they were going to do this, and it was kind of like well. We've been on a big, long world tour. We might as well take the year off, make some more cash. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you choose from all the songs that you've written? Because there's quite um, a catalogue there, isn't there? It's well, a I double CD, I should say. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, I drew up a list of about 30... I think it was 33. But that would have made... That would have made it three CDs. Mm. And I think that's kind of overstating the point a bit. Cause Bob Dylan, it, yeah. Well, yeah, because Bob Dylan's only got two CDs in his best of. <laughs> and the Beatles have only got two in there, so I think three would have been stretching it a bit. And what, what input did, did Brother Liam have in this? He just looked down the list to see where his song was. <laughs> and uh, he got to that and he just went, yeah, whatever. All right. And what, 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 what are relations like between you and him at present? Um, <clears throat> they're all right, you know. What all does right. all right mean? Uh, <laughs> So I find it fascinating that people find it fascinating, do you know what I mean? It, I haven't spoken to him for a few months, but not like I'm not actively not speaking to him. It's just that we kind of live in each other's pockets while we're on the road. And uh, I kind of just slip back into life when I get back off the road. And Liam does this thing and I do mine, you know? Well, most people think, though, well, it's deep, deeper than that, isn't it? There's all the well-publicised spats that you have and the quotes about not liking each other and that sort of thing. Yeah, well, he doesn't, he doesn't like me. He doesn't? No. Why doesn't he like you? <laughs> Well, I don't know. You'd have to ask him next time he's on here, wouldn't Come you? Come on, you know. I don't, know. well, I don't, I don't, I, well, because I'm better looking than him, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, has it always been like that? Was it, was it, when you're growing up as kids in, in Manchester, was it like that? Well, because he was, he was five years younger than I, than I am. So, when, when I was 15, he was 10, so the, so the age gap was kind of more prevalent then than it is now. But, um, <clears throat> I guess because... There is a lot of pressure being in, 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 in a group, particularly being in a big group, you know. And um, we kind of fall out on a regular basis. But it's not, it's not anything that's ever put the band in danger. The only people that suffer, really, are the other... Whoever happens to be in the band at that point, you know, is the other people in the band. You know, there's been hundreds of them in the past. But <laughs> do, do, do you wish that could, you could define that brotherly love as it's really generally defined? You know, well, I could define... Let, let's put it this way. If he was getting his head kicked in right now, right, <laughs> I'd probably join in to save him. Right? If I was getting my head, he'd probably join in to save me. I can't say any fairer than that. No, you can't. So we'll have to wait until it happens. Yeah, but other, other, than, other, other than that, it'd be kind of, you know, I'd be... You'd be making it somewhere that it's not, you know. I mean, I, 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 do, you, do, you have, do, you, do you have brother or brothers and sisters? I don't. don't you see, this, this interests me. I've always wanted a brother or a sister, and I thought... I always know, wanted a sister, you see. Yeah. An older sister would have been nice. Just to cop off with her mates would have been good. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you like women, don't you? Because, I mean, you, your mum was your kind of beacon in your life. Yeah, yeah. Well, my mum was just a... Well, she brought us up, really, do you know what I mean? Exactly. Because, I mean, the, what's, what you pick up in research when you talk about your, your upbringing, you, you say you talk about the friction with Liam, and you say it had something to do, maybe, with the way you were brought up. I think, yeah, I think so. I think maybe... Because I, I, I kind of... How can I put it? 
We don't like authority figures very much, me and Liam. And I guess because everybody in the band kind of directs everything towards me because I am, for want of a better word, kind of seen as the leader. I think Liam rebels against that. Do you right. know what I mean? Right. And that kind of causes friction between us. But, you know, growing up was, was different. You know, it was, we were like... We shared a bedroom, which I always resented that. Because my older brother got his own bedroom. And I had to share it with Liam when he came along. I've never quite forgiven him for that. But I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but also, too, I mean, it, there was violence in your family, wasn't there? Your father was a violent well, man. Well, yeah. No, I... Saying that, I thought... I, not... Not any more than probably any other of my mate's families on our street, do you know what I mean? But that wouldn't be saying much, would it? Because, I mean, you grew up in a very tough neighbourhood. Yeah, but it was the 70s, and this was before the New Age man was, you know, the trendy thing to be, do you know what I mean? There was, like, it was a violent time in the 70s anyway, do you know what I mean? Um, it's even been cha not changing nappies, your dad, and beating you up, for God's sake. I and mean, that's what he used to do. <laughs> he used to beat you. Yeah, he did, yeah. But, you on, on, and you used to lie awake at night, waiting in your bed, and thinking, is he going to come in and whack me? Yeah. And, and you developed a stammer because of that? Yeah. Where well, did you know all this? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, see, and, and the other, what really interests me is that people nowadays talk about sink estates, and they talk about youth, and they talk about the problems they have. But, I mean, you lived all that. Yeah. And you lived at a time when, when people were not as concerned, maybe, as they are now, mm. at the very beginning of, of, of all that. And, and, and what fascinates me is, is how a kid with no hope and no future grows up. I mean, <clears> what was it like? I, I remember being young, and the, the worst part for me was not... I don't consider my upbringing to be that different than anybody else that lived on my street or any of the, yes. other, or any of the, other, the other guys that I used to knock around with who are my age. But it is kind of soul-destroying, or it was in the 80s when you're going to sign on with your dad, with your best mate and his dad, and you think, you know, our dads are, haven't even got jobs, you know. So what hope is there for us, do you know what I mean? So that in itself breeds frustration and non-hope, I guess, do you know what I mean? Yes. But it's never... None of that has ever come out in my music, do you know what I mean? And my music has always been kind of pretty positive, you know, and I've always been fascinated by life, you know, that... I don't want to sound too... Um, that's weird about it, but, like, every day I wake, I wake up, you know, it was like, it was great because something great might happen today. It wasn't kind of like... I wouldn't wake up in a negative mood any day, and I never do, you know. But, um... Those were kind of rough times when there was no work in Manchester. Yes. You know, for not, not, not only for your age group, but for, you know, your parents at all, you know. And was, drugs uh, were around. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And you got stuck into them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the difference between the middle classes and the working classes. The, the middle classes experiment with drugs. The working class just get stuck in. Like, <laughs> and, and forget experimenting with them. Let's just get them done. So by the time you became a rock and roller, you were very well practised in the art of... Well, this is what, you know, you read, you read all these stories now about uh, these rock stars going into rehab and, you know, somebody must take them aside at some point and say, look, I think you're going off the rails, you know, you might want to go to the Priory or somewhere. We were off the rails to start with. We were off the rails before we got... <laughs> before we got a record deal. Before Temptation came yeah. your way. I mean, yeah. we, we kind of arrived in London hammered, just out of it. Just like, <laughs> come on, let's have it, do you know what I mean? And um, so it's never been a problem for... It's never been a problem for me and Liam, and it fascinates me that all, out of all the people that we hung out with, the only two people that have never been in rehab is me and Liam. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. And why have you resisted that? I mean, what, well, why... I, I, I kind of... Pass... I mean, we are clean now, we should say that. You, you... Yeah, well, I, I, see, I don't like that term either, because I'd never considered myself to be dirty, do you know what I mean? I took... <laughs> well, well, you're, free of, you're free of drugs. Yeah.